four days of madness, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just do a sound check. Yeah, we good. What's going on, guys? I hope everybody's doing well. We're back from the weekend. And we're going into a very, very volatile week ahead. Four days. That's all it is. Four days where you can make a lot of money and you can lose a lot of money. Well, what do we mean? Well, we have FOMC happening this week. We have a monthly candle close coming this week. We also have non-farm payrolls coming in this week. Now, the non-farm payrolls always happen at the end, sorry, at the start of a new month, the first Friday, okay? So we're going into a very, very volatile week. Word on the street says that it is most definite that they are going to hold the interest rates. But it's the press conference where Powell is going to be asked the question, what does it look like in the near future? What can we expect in December's meeting? Well, that's where we're probably going to hear Powell saying we could actually increase the interest rates even more. But what does it all mean for Bitcoin? What does it mean for cryptocurrency? Right now, we've got the memes coming into play right now. We've got a lot of people pumping a lot of money into meme coins. Pepe coin, it's doing numbers. Lots of liquidity is going into that bad boy. And I will say it now. If you've made a penny or two on Pepe coin from this rally right now, just take some profit off the table, ladies and gentlemen. It's not going to cost you any money if you're making profit. Let's understand that. It's not going to cost you anything. And don't even say, oh, I sold off at this point and it went up to the moon from there and I've lost a load of money. You have not lost no money that you were not guaranteed to get. That's the name of trading. You focus more on what money can be made and what money can be lost. Now, listen, when you're in a profitable trade, if you're in profit of 5,000 and then it goes down to 3,000, you've lost money because it's money that you could have had. Don't think of, oh, I'm going to close up a trade off and take $2,000, and then you see Bitcoin go and sail up to the upside, and in your head, you're thinking, oh, I could have made four, or $5,000 more. Oh, you can't be looking at trading like that. And if you are looking at trading like that, you're not going to last five minutes in the arena of speculation. In today's live stream, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be diving into what we are going to see happening going into this week. All right. I will warn you again, be bloody careful trading this week. I'm telling everyone that's involved on the platinum members, gold members, the discord. I'm warning everyone to be very, very careful this week because we have lots of news that can shake you out. All right. So just make sure capital preservation is your goal this week. If you do decide to trade. Use light positions. All right. Don't overexpose yourself because in this lab, we're going to explain how retail gets continuously swiped up. OK, cool. So, ladies and gentlemen, back at it again. I'm going live now. I am live now. Ah, happy Halloween, by the way. Cool. So <laughs> there it is. Missed it. So are we good with the attire? Is everything nice? Are we happy, ladies and gentlemen? Cool. Right. Let's roll with the flavor. Oh, Forgive me. <clears throat> My name is Dr. Vector. You can call me Tino. Let's get with the diagnosis. Bitcoin. So, <clears throat> psychological ranges have always been something that I pay so much attention to. And if you are new to the channel, you're new to trading, you'll be wondering what are these psychological levels. The psychological level currently sits at the 34,194 and, of course, the 33,937. This area right here is taking into consideration the start of a new trading week in crypto. And it takes the first high and the first low that is formed within that four hour window, eight hour window, sorry. Okay. And you can see that's the high and this is the low. Okay. Now, if you use this hybrid system indicator, you just go into the settings. And if you want to understand something, and like I said to you before, Make sure that you're not overexposing yourself to certain trades this week because of the volatility. I'm going to be showing you the calendar very, very shortly. But go all the way down to the point in the indicator where it shows you the weekly psychological levels. Okay, and it's valid on the one hour time frame, 30 minute, 15, 5, 3 and 1 minute time frame. Okay, now if you go here and it selects show historical psychological levels, you'll be able to see how price behaves throughout the last few weeks at the psychological levels. I'm going to say it to you now. 
if you don't come back to watch any live stream from this day forth, if you really want to understand how the ranges get manipulated and why the first high and low that is formed at the start of a trading week in cryptocurrency is such an important range, watch and study the psychological levels. That's all I'm going to say to you. Have an understanding of the vector candles. I've got a free course on the Traders Reality website, which breaks it all down for you. And it even shows you how to plot your own psych psychological levels without the hybrid system indicator. Because you can then pull up your phone and plot the levels necessary without the indicator. You have to know the tools. That course is free of charge for you. You've got to become a bronze member to take advantage of it. And it doesn't cost you a penny. Okay. But go and get that course and watch it. It gives you everything on what tools we have in the hybrid system. Now, going back into the um, to the to Bitcoin, you can see what's happened here. You have got what's this, Milad? Mad love to you, my friend. There is a relationship that happens with the psychological levels. Back again, I want to just draw your attention to this, all right? You might be saying, Artie, just get to the charts, but without this, you, you're going to come across something very, very shortly, and it could come to a point where they come and test this range, and then you're going to remember what I have just explained about this. The psychological levels aren't just no any normal support and resistance point. They effectively set the spread that the market maker is working. Remember, he has a, he has a quota. He has to fulfill an obligation to the exchange that he's in partnership with. The exchange has to fulfill an obligation that he's in the relationship with, with the market maker. He has to supply the liquidity. Market maker has to supply the liquidity on top of that to make sure that both market maker and exchange have this agreement where they can earn off the backs of you. How do they do that? Funding rates. Okay. Market orders. All right. Limit orders. You're all paying for it. And this psychological range dictates what we can expect throughout the week. The faster they move away from this range and the further they move away from it, the precedence has been set that inside of that psychological range, the highest point and the lowest point that was formed at the start of the trading week, in essence, tells us that market maker has his positions inside of there. So he's building longs and shorts, longs and shorts. The initiation of a move away from that range gives you the heads up that they are potentially working higher prices, which you guys would call a bullish move. I would call a markup phase, okay? Because they're marking price up by hitting the ask. When they hit the ask, it means they're encouraging aggressive buyers to come in. On the back of an aggressive buyer is who? A seller. And who is selling as price is going up? Market maker. What position is he selling? He's selling shorts. So he's preparing for a move later on. And the logic says that usually prices come back down towards the psychological levels. The closer they are to the psychological levels, the more likely that we have an accumulation phase, which tells us that the market maker, in principle, is preparing for something. That is what's happening this week. We got FOMC, un unemployment claims, ADP, non-employment um, change, jolts, job openings, okay? Non-farm payrolls. It's going to be a mad one this week. Just the psychological levels themselves are going to be enough for you to understand where you are in the charts. You either take this game seriously or this game will seriously take you out. This is how this game operates. Now, going into the calendar, look at that. Red, 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 red. All right. Halloween, baby. And we've got a little bit of a pumpkin color happening. There is nothing happening today, guys. We've got a free day in the marketplace. Awesome. And this is what I'm suggesting to you. Some of you might be like, oh, but I'm going to miss out and stuff. Look, if you get if you start saying that you're going to miss out on volatility and what have you, you're too emotional for trading. Get out. Seriously. Because you're going to you're going to spend money in this marketplace and give it to the market maker, to another retail trader who has the patience. All right. I would prefer you to go out and spend the money. Go and buy something for yourself. Go and treat someone that you love. All right. Go and give it to charity. Don't, don't even do that. Don't even give to charity because it doesn't never end up getting to the charity. Only some charities. But go and do a good deed. Because if you're going to fight the market this week. You have got a bloodbath of movement that could shake you out. Remember, we cannot be irrational. The market can. 
because the market's depth of pockets and the money is so much deeper than your average Joe, okay? This is what we're looking at. Tuesday itself, we've got an easy day. Why? Well, we've got an um, employment cost index and consumer confidence. After that, 2 p.m. UK time, which is effectively 9 a.m. Eastern Standard, you've got a free day. So wait for the news to come out. Once the news is out, do what you want to do. But the day after, oh my God. In my opinion, I think it's going to be a very quiet day after Tuesday, if not from Tuesday. That's what I think, right? Now look at this. Bitcoin, look at that area. Can you see how they've moved away from the psychological range to only come back into it? What did we say about the violet vector candle? The violet vector candle suggests that volume is starting to rise, but it's happening at the lowest point from a move to the downside. So you assume that at the print of that candle that something is happening, which means that the selling off could be slowing down, all right? Which then leads you to see that at the point of this candle being printed, you would naturally be making sure that you're monitoring the chart because this is the point where a retrace can come into play on the recovery of the candlestick. You take a Fibonacci point from the top of the candle, which is the wick, and then you take the bottom of the candle, which is right there, and you zoom in. And you say to yourself, well, if they have the strength, because remember, this point right here, it's where it opened. So if it can succeed above that point, I'm going to assume that this is going to be the test of the psychological low, sorry, psychological high and the 50 EMA confluence. Remember, confluences are all about the number of instances or actions or events that occur at one time, which are going to aid you in deciding whether or not prices are going to go in your favor or not. The vector candles give you the heads up of the activity that is happening within the London Underground. Back in the day, I don't know if any of you are aware of this, but if you've been to London and you've used the Underground, you can see that the Underground itself is filled with colours. Black, red, blue, silver, gold. They've got all these colours to label each tube or Underground route that you can take. Why did they have so many colors? Because back when they first created the underground, people were illiterate. They couldn't read, but they could identify colors, okay? That logic is the same right here. You don't need to know, well, you do, and it does serve you. But you need to have an understanding of what each of these four colors represents. They represent buying and selling activity, and a lot of it. When you see these vector candles, it gives you the heads up that something is happening. The gray candlesticks, I don't even like to pay attention to them. If I'm able to remove the, the gray and the, um, the light gray and the dark gray candlesticks, I would, okay? Because I don't need them. They're just noise. I only pay interest to the vector candles. So look at this. You've now got a big wick on Bitcoin, spike to the upside. Who's up there, ladies and gentlemen, retail? This is the logic of how to translate the vectors. The red vector candle wick comes into play. That means I expect them to recover that wick, okay? By that principle, I know that there are people trapped up there. Now, retail traders will say, or conventional retail trading wisdom will call that like a doji or a gravestone or a wick, a rickshaw, whatever you want to call it. They will call it a rejection. It doesn't like it. There is no rejection. Principally, yes, it went up to come down. But who's up there? Who's up there? I'm a market maker. I want to get my orders filled. Who's up there? I'll show you. Someone's up there. $43.8 million worth of longs opened at 34,835. That's no rejection. That's commitment. So that logically tells me that if market makers go into attempts to take the highs again, he's going to recover this wick. So that's where I pull out my Fibonacci and take the high, take the low, and assume that the midpoint right there will be the point that if they can succeed that zone, I expect Bitcoin to move higher. If we take it by the logic of patterns, what have we got? We have got the rise, the retrace, the continuation. Because if this move is valid, 
which looks like it's cleared the liquidity right here. I look left. Do I have the same flavor? Of course I do. I've got it up here. Okay. So I'm breaking down the logic with no emotion. I don't care what Bitcoin can do from now until the ETF. I have no interest. I'm only interested in what it's doing. Okay. The more vector candles I see inside of this zone, the more conviction I'm going to have to make me believe that the probability of a move higher is going to be favorable. Let's start looking at the orders. What have we got here? The order flow. We've come back to the VWAP, ladies and gentlemen, with aggressive selling, which we understand to be what? Buying. Because you can't sell if no one's there. Hi, give me your orders. Hit the bids. Come on, give me your order. I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you. Give it to me. Give it to me. I'll take it. Lots of people came down there. Well, unfortunately, the VWAP, which is the volume weighted average price, has now succeeded at trapping traders short. We know their margins have been triggered up here. Yippee-ki-yay -yay to the upside. So now what we're looking at is order flow. These are orders that are yet to be confirmed. They are coming into the order book. Top side of Bitcoin at 35,000. We have 386 Bitcoin orders. Okay. Orders. Down below, if we look, we can see, do we have an area, any areas of support? Well, I do see that there is some interesting bouts of liquidity down below, but not to the point where I'm concerned. I keep on zooming out and I can see that I've got heavy liquidity at the top side right here at 35,000. But as we go down, you can now see that there's still liquidity at 595 Bitcoin orders between 33,350 and 33,400. So I'm going to pay attention to that area. All right. I'm going to assume that you see this area right here. This area is where guys previously came in to show support. So the logic would say that the limit buys should be coming in which is why there is an imbalance right now of minus 12%, which is suggesting that limit sales are taking over in terms of the balance between buyers and sellers. So limit sales are being triggered. That means selling is happening. Where can I get selling? Where can I assume selling? It's inside of here. So the next logical thing is, is price continues to break this range, goes higher. Now, remember, we have one day really, to do whatever we want in terms of trading, okay? Just be very, very cautious. Please don't feel like I'm trying and I'm telling you what to do. It's the same shit over and over again when it comes to news announcements. When you sit long enough at the charts, you start to pick up. Volatility one day is different to the next, but whenever there's news announcements, there is always going to be the calm before the storm, okay? Avoid playing in that storm. Just be a bystander, spectate, and do what I say to everybody else. Be the caretakers. Go in and clean up when retail wasn't patient enough to wait for the news to come out. Why? Because you will see a red vector candle or a green vector candle coming into play, which you can exploit. Because once you hear the news, you'll be able to then say, okay, the market is liking that. How will you determine that? You look to the treasuries, you look to the yields, you look to the NASDAQ, the S&P, <clears throat> you look to the volatility index, you can start pulling up a story together and that will say to you, right, it looks like risk is on. I'm going to go to Bitcoin, but hold on a second, Bitcoin's dropped down. They're buying. They're going to reverse it. You take the trade. Then when it works in your favor, sit back and understand, okay, could I do that again in the next news announcements? What did I do differently? Or what I did differently was I allowed the news to come out, saw the red vector candle, let them play the, let them play the range for about five, 10 minutes. And then bang, I took my trade because I saw price stabilizing at the psychological levels. And then I took my long, it went in my favor, happy days. That is a logistical, systematic way to approach trading. Where are the emotions? Now, if you took a trade before the news announcements, then you're getting in a bit of a pickle. Oh, shit, man. Uh, um, should I take this trade? Or should I close it? I can't close it, man. I'm losing money here. But what if, if I lose this account right now? That means I've lost 50% of the balance. I'll, I'll wait until it goes up a little bit more. Oh, right. It's now gone in my favor. I'm now minus 10% on my account. Cool. I may as well hold it because if it's managed to recover that whole range, then it's going to continue. Bang, it breaks even. And then all of a sudden, Bitcoin tanks. You want to put yourself in that situation. Do not be complaining why you got shaken out. Because you already accepted that that could be the case if you decide to play the news. Okay? Going into the start of the week, ladies and gentlemen, we know that meme coins are, and this is what I'm going to say to you as well with meme coins. You want to play with fire. Meme coins is where it's at. 
Frankly, that's where it is. Okay. Going into coin market cap, you can see that these are what trending. This is what's trending right now. Okay. You've got Dogecoin, Rocket Pool, BNB, Pepe. Look at that bad boy. It's up nearly 60% in the last seven days, 50% in the last 30 days. All right. Solana's up there as well. I shared a weekly projection of Solana and I said it's going to come up to this point by the end of the week. And then that was last night. No, that was the last night. And then all of a sudden, the weekly target has been smashed out. Done. What a joke. I ain't even going to tell you about what else I've said. I am not going to say anything else because that is, it's just, I give up projecting cryptocurrency. I give up. You know why? Because it always ends up going to it without even giving me a chance to absorb it. What I, I shared it from last night here. I expect Solana to consolidate sideways and all that stuff, come down into the support zone, happy days, and end up at $33.90 by the end of the week. Ha! <laughs> what a story. Anyway. We got Bitcoin making a nice little flavor, some move up. Let's go and have a look at what's actually hitting in terms of the meme coins themselves, guys. That's kind of, like I said, just be very, very careful with it. They aggressively move up and they aggressively come back down. Going into the live order flow right now of alts with unusual volume, you've got link, ID, hook. All right. And we're seeing when it comes to altcoins, I really want to see altcoins with terms of volume in the futures. All right. I really want to see you know, triple digits, man. I want to see it in the millions. I want to see 300 million, 100 million, you know, or at least 50, 60 million. All right. So for example, you've got Solana here, 70 million. That is awesome. All right. That validates a reason to why prices will contain themselves to continue to go up. Okay. But just be careful when you're trading altcoins that haven't really got the volume coming in. I mean, look, Mana, Storage, GMT, XEM, Engine, you know, it's, it's, you've got the vol the liquidity is there for the altcoins, okay? But just remember, the same way an altcoin moves up aggressively, they're going to sell those coins because the volume isn't present. It doesn't take much to really move the altcoins, okay? So likewise, we go into Solana right now. You can see bright as well. Bitcoin's on its way. Happy days. Likewise, we go into Solana. You can see bright as day that it's making a nice little flavorsome move up. We've got these imbalances. All I'm suggesting that you do, guys, is if you are in profits on Solana, make sure that you're marking off the vector candle midpoints right here so that you can justify. Do I buy at this point or do I sell at this point? Okay, just be mindful of it. That's all. I'm giving you areas where you are going to systematically make a decision. Logically, not because I'm losing money. Forget that. Losing is part of the game. The idea is to make sure you preserve your gains. And you do that by allocating points in the chart where you expect movement to occur. And that's where you find these midpoints of these vector candles. Okay. Very, very important. Very important. Okay. Going into Ethereum, what we got there? Ethereum doing the same logic right here. It's holding out. We've got the midpoint of the vector candle zone right there. Look at that. It's holding out. Look at how it just respects this region. Why that point? Why? Because the vector candle itself is suggesting that they started to sell aggressively as prices were moving higher into that range. OK, so keep that in mind when you're doing your trading with altcoins. Here's Matic. Matic doing great right now, working its way up. It's held well. Get the vector candle region, top side, bottom right there. You've got that area. So let's hypothetically assume you took a long on Matic at 63 cents. It went all the way up to 64.46. Okay, cool. Well, what do you want to do? Do you want to take profit? You take a profit, you close it off now. Fine. But if you want to try and put a lock in profit, the midpoint of the vector candle is where you would lock in your profits. Try and make it a risk-free trade. Try and engineer yourself to take trades where the risk is zero. So it's not costing you anything. The money's been locked. The more you do that, the greater success you're going to see in trading. Simple as. Because it's called capital preservation. All right? Every time you lock in that profit, done. You don't need to care what happens next. Oh, it comes back and hits your stop. Well, you've locked in the profit. It doesn't matter. If you're happy with the profit that you're making, then cool. Anything else after that is a bonus. Just move up your stop. Okay? Going into other assets it's itself, um, let's go into Tesla for a second because Tesla, it's not fully open just yet. We've got three minutes until the market actually opens. Uh, look, we've got a big week coming in terms of what's going on in the stock market itself. We have advanced micro devices and Amgen, you know, Nancy Pelosi's stock. They've got reports coming out this week and we've also got Apple earnings as well. So it's going to be very interesting for Apple 
um, going into this week. That's going to be the deciding factor as to whether or not the Nasdaq and the S&P are going to sustain themselves to the downside or the upside. We really need to see Apple doing really well. And if Microsoft have done well just on the cloud division, well, Google was that before, okay? You've also got now the fact that Google's missed on its certain earnings. What's Apple going to be like, okay? Got to be very, very careful with the earnings. And that's going into Thursday as well, all right? In other news, Thailand's fourth largest bank buys 103 million stake in the crypto exchange. Things are happening in Thailand, all right? Now, the company that's doing all of this, they've got loads of branches all over the place, primarily in China, okay? So that's going to be very interesting to see how that's going to work, given that China's just like no-go for cryptocurrency. But keep that in mind, okay? I'll be looking at that. I'm going to have a look at some altcoins very, very shortly. I'll pull some up for you. And by the way, guys, we've got the trading competition starting in a day's time or so. So if you haven't done so already, get over to the description of, the ch of this video. Join Mexi right there, Traders Reality. You get the benefit of deposit to uh, trade and earn and what have you. But in one day's time, you'll get to join for the competition, okay? So you can't actually click this bad boy just yet because it's not open just yet. It opens in one day's time, okay? So join Mexi and then join, come to this page and then make sure that you join for the competition through this page right here. So you can then get registered. Number of participants, zero, because it's not open just yet. So go check that bad boy. Everything you need is in the description of the video. Now, let's get with some flavor, right? So... Look at that. That is despicable, isn't it? How they come up and touch that midpoint. Why? Why that point? What's going on inside of that zone? So what have we just had? 34,689. 34,689. 34,689 would put us inside of this region right here. So the shorts have been liquidated. So 34,714. 34,677. So $43 million worth of short liquidations have been done, okay? That would be the midpoint of the vector right there, okay? So keep that in mind. Look at how it just respects it. Now, does it respect it every single time? No. Sometimes it likes to go over a little bit and then rolls over or continues, okay? The things you want to be mindful of is confluences, as I said at the start of the live stream. Look at this confluence. It's a wet dream. That's the VWAP, right? That's the point. Look at how they hold the psychological high. Look at how they hold with the 50 EMA. Look at how the 5 and 13 EMA have not breached the 50 EMA on the one hour time frame. Again, moving averages are laggard, all right? They will cost you more money in the, few, in the long run if you are exclusively basing everything on moving averages. It's all about confluences. Remember, this big move up is only telling you that you've had volatility. Mark off your box and you can assume that the moving averages have told you there's movement to the upside. I'm looking for a reversion back into the mean. The vector candles give you the clue. All right. Look at how it comes back down into that zone. Keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Now. Let me go into some altcoins. Let me just go and have a look at Link because I see Link is doing some very good numbers, okay? Wow. Nice big push up there with Link. The volatility's come in with 41 million on Link. That is very good. Okay, then. So, look, they've gone and swept the liquidity to the upside right here. Now, what we need to see is in 30 minutes' time, this candlestick is going to finish. Now, look at how soon this has happened. Within 30 minutes of it starting, right? The candlestick has made a wild move to the upside. So those of you that are trading link right now, the logic would say that there should be a red vector candle appearing inside of this area. Okay, let's see if that's the case. There we go. There's a red vector candle. Now, how did we know that? How did we know that that was a red vector candle? By what logic and principle? Because within an hour, okay, of this, this one hour candle, within 30 minutes, this candle has already spiked up to come back down again. That's a stop run to me. Now, if the proof of the move is going to come into play with this bad boy, that red vector candle on the smaller time frames is going to get recovered. The question is when. So the logic says, let's have a look. Take the midpoint, chain, top of the wick, go down. What do we have? 
Well, we have that as the midpoint. So if they can succeed above that point, we're going to assume that they're going to get ready to take that range. You don't go into this asset and be like, oh my God, I'm going to buy it right now. Oh, dude, I've got to get in, man. It's pumping, it's pumping. Again, add logic. Be systemized with your approach in trading. If, then, action. If not, then, action. That's how they do it. Because that's all you've got. You've got nothing else. No crypto gods, gurus, whatever. They ain't going to tell you shit about how it operates. You need to justify a reason, logical, systematic, objective, to assume they're going to come back up and break this point. You need to wait for it to be tested because that's the same spot they could sell from. Oh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We're not happy with that because that's what the truth is. That's what trading is. It's what if. OK. And it's about pulling together all those confluences, tests of the moving averages, EMAs, weekly highs, lows, whatever it is you use. You've got to put logic to it because the hard right over here. <laughs> it's second guessing. That's all you're doing. You're all professional guessers. That's the truth. And there is an aspect of luck in trading. Don't get it twisted. All right. Your mem... <laughs> Thad, man. <laughs> Come on, bro. His membership lasted longer than his marriage. That is rough. That is rough. You know? So, that's where we are with, with that. Guys, it's, it's, it's a psychological game. Finished. That's all it is. All right? What's going to make you do something? Here we go. Gas. Now, this is perfect. What we've seen in link is what we need to see. What we've seen in, in gas is what we need to see in link. I have more confidence about this going up than I do with link going up. Why? Because they haven't retraced aggressively. All right. The proof of the move to me says they've come back down towards the moving average. Okay. Like I said, moving average is a lag that don't help. All right. But what does this tell me? It tells me that volatility is flat right now in this asset. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the little pumps the little poised points in the chart where they like to hold. And I do that by understanding the vector candles appearing inside of this range. As long as they can hold above the 50 EMA, then everything is all good. I am then looking for a volatile move to break higher. Psychological high is right there. So what does that tell me? That tells me that's where they like to sell from. So the logic says that if they move up from this point and clear that range and go to the psychological high, I should be taking profits from that point on the logic I'm going long from this range. Forget the asset. Look at the structure. Look at what it's doing. Okay. When you've got this and you go back in the charts and see that happening. Okay. You build this story. The only thing you can do is just take, just take the trade. That's as simple as that. Make sure you're not shaking yourself out. Have an understanding of the asset that you're trading. Right. If it likes to move aggressively straight up and down, maybe that's not going to look too good on you when you're using 100x leverage. All right. Use a little bit of leverage, get a flavor of what it's like to see size and play about with it. Train your eyes to understand the variations of this style of trading. If it helps you draw a chart, from, draw a structure, say after a big move up, we see price consolidate holding inside its zone. I'm looking for green and blue vector candles. I want to see a break up higher, retrace continuation out. There's a pattern for you. All right. Now go back in the charts and find this pattern, find this structure. And after you've done that and you found it a hundred times, then you want to go forward, test it, go and try and wait and see if you see a big move to the upside, retrace back down, holding in the 50 EMA, green and blue vector candles. I'm giving you strategy that works. Strategy over a sample size. Don't take this. It doesn't work and it shits the bed and goes down. It invalidates it after one sample. All right, cool. If that's your logic, then chow chow. Trading's going to wind you up. Here we go. There's the midpoint right now on the vector candle, five minute point. Okay. We're at the midpoint of the vector candle on the higher time frames. Now we're getting information. Okay. So this is where we start paying attention. We go down to smaller time frames. What do we see? Do we see it actually selling off? Red vector candle right there. That's a red vector. No, not a red vector. So that tells me it's not really selling off. 
We're still holding above the moving average. This could lead to the rise, retrace, continuation. Stopping volume candle up there. All right, so I don't see no vectors just yet. I ain't seen the conviction. So I'm, I'm patient. I'm waiting to justify why Bitcoin's going to come back up and attack the 34821 zone. That's my logic. How would I defy that logic? It has to break down. It has to invalidate the 50 EMA and the 200 EMA on the one hour time frame. Oh, sorry. Um, it has to invalidate the 200 EMA on the one minute time frame. Logic. What do I see happening? It's going up. When do I start feeling concerned about it going down? When it starts going down and gets closer to my point of interest. If it doesn't get any closer to that point, then I'm convicting myself in the belief that it's going to go higher. I manage my expectations. I can't get emotional about this. Why? I'm dealing with the unknown. What are you scared of? Well, there's nothing there. So why are you scared? Oh, I don't want to lose money. Get out of trading. Oh, you can't be like that. Well, I can. Because that's what it is. You think you can go into trading and win every single time? No. That's the biggest bullshit on earth. Biggest bullshit on earth. Go to any prop firm. The one thing they only care about is capital preservation. Paul Tudor Jones said it himself. He goes into his trading day accepting that he's going to lose. That's capital preservation. That's what this game is about. And you want to play with fire this week, ladies and gentlemen. Into the news announcements. Mm. Do not complain. And don't play the idea of shoulda, woulda, coulda, but you didn't. All right? Going into higher time frames for my guys. So far, so good. On the daily, Bitcoin is still holding above the 5 and 13 EMA. All right? For my holders. As long as it sustains the behavior above this area. This is your area right here. You see this? This is your area where Bitcoin could turn and go lower. If it's not showing signs of going to that point, we are sustained to see higher prices. Break down the logic, look left, and where would you be trading into? You're trading into the logic of the red vector candle. At most, this is where I expect Bitcoin to finalize, okay? Because what's happening right now is the ETF hype. That's what's going on, all right? You've got meme coins going crazy. Take profits accordingly with the meme coins, all right? Now, just to put things into perspective, we have got some very interesting movement right now. I'm just going to pull this over for the order flow for Bitcoin. Now, what I'm seeing right now is this is Bitcoin's 25-day chart, okay? And we are currently, let me just move this upwards for you just so I can see where we are. Um, okay, then, cool. So we are right now, right, okay, huge imbalances above. We're at the value area high, if knowledge serves me correctly, on Bitcoin. Let me just wait. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This keeps going. It's, it's 25 day one. So that's why it takes a while. Here we go. Right. So we're going value itself. Here we go. So we are currently at value area high on the 25 day chart order flow chart for Bitcoin. So it is an area for or consistent with reversals. Doesn't mean that Bitcoin's going to sharply, excuse me, doesn't mean Bitcoin doesn't mean Bitcoin is going to come back down to 31473 today, okay? What it means is we are in an area where we expect reversals to come in. But what you've got to be mindful of is this. Can you see all the orders right now inside of this zone? Two seconds. Let it go back up to it, all right? So look, you see how the values just change. See how it's increasing. You see that? That's value. So wherever there is value is support, okay? But we're in a value area high. Now, you're going to get people that will say, now, Bitcoin's going to reverse from this point. I expect Bitcoin, listen, don't get it twisted. I do expect Bitcoin to come and test this vector candle. That's one thing. Again, logic, systematic, logical thinking. I expect it to come and test this point. What it's going to do beforehand is a different story. What are we going into? Well, we're going into news announcements, okay? Logic would say it would be beneficial for me to see Bitcoin spike back down, pick up the interest, shift back up again. That's what we would expect. We're putting logic to our assumption. Right now, I don't see that logic coming into play anytime soon. We start breaking the 5 and 13, the 5 EMA on the daily time frame, then we're going to have a conversation. Because right now, we've got the golden cross, okay? So everyone's going to be like, oh my God, Bitcoin's going to do the golden cross and what have you. Let's yeah, go long, go long. And usually with golden crosses, it's a psychological impression to make people buy. It's a perfect time for them to reverse. Load up, shake those guys out, make them believe that the golden cross hasn't played out. It's not working. Let's go short and then reverse it to continue back up again. 
and really bully people. Okay? Pick your time frame. Pick your intention. Don't focus on what you can make. Focus on how much it's going to cost you, okay, in the first instance. If you know how much you're going to make, sorry, if you know how much you're going to lose, you have no emotions that can be triggered. You've accepted what you can lose. So you have no reason to be emotional about trading. It really is that simple. I'm happy to lose $400 on a trade. Fine. I've accepted it. Oh, it hit my stop straight away. Okay, back to the drawing board. I need to make sure that I'm maybe not using so, so much of a tight stop. Okay, maybe if I drop my leverage a little bit, I might be able to absorb a little bit more of a move. So if I drop it down a little bit and maybe increase my stop to about $600, will that allow me to really take advantage of Bitcoin stop runs? Okay, maybe. All right. You have to play around with it, but you have to know how much you're going to lose. You can't be focusing on what you can make because no one knows what they're going to make. All right. You can set targets, percentage targets, but no one knows that they're indefinitely going to make money on any move on cryptocurrency. If the heavyweights are thinking how much they're going to be losing, why on earth would anyone in retail tell you that they're going to be making tons of money on a trade? Don't get me twisted. You can be optimistic. Don't get it twisted. You can be optimistic and have a goal. I get that. But don't be married to the trade. Ladies and gentlemen, mad love and respect. I will not be going live tomorrow because I'm spending the whole day with my daughter. But please, capital preservation. Take care of yourselves, gang. Mad love. Peace.